right so it is that time again to rank another franchise or series there are a total of nine movies in the planet of the apes films there's been like two reboots and before i talk about my ranking there's not a single film on this list that's like truly awful like straight up awful to a point where it's like unwatchable every film on here it's okay to like really good nothing bad or anything so let's get started kill them all <laughs> Number 9 will be the Planet of the Apes 2001 version. This isn't a awful film, but I would assume if you are a big fan of this franchise, you wouldn't really like this one very much. I watched it for the first time, I was a newcomer, so I didn't have this perceived kind of background or hype for it because I'm pretty sure people were really excited when this film was announced back in 2000-2001. But the film has nothing for it going on, like I guess it does, but it's really boring. Mark Wahlberg still off, I don't know if it's because this is kind of one of his first acting careers or the director by Tim Burton was kind of not there in both him and Waller just didn't mesh well. I don't know which one it is, but he fell off. And then there's a one angry ape. Hatred towards humans is just blatantly obvious and there. And it's like, damn, one angry ass ape. And then the sympathetic ape is his wife, I believe. And then she goes away, runs away with the human, with Mark Wahlberg and the rest of the humans. And there's not a single memorable character aside from Mark and very angry ape. The film's also very dark. It's supposed to be set in the armor that the apes are wearing in like medieval times, which I didn't mind. And like the faces and everything about them still look good, look fine, but everything else around it just kind of sucks very angry apes there's like one or two given apes but and then by the end we found out that the very angry ape whose name i forgot about i don't think it was caesar right is it caesar i don't think it is because so angry to where it's like i refuse to believe this is caesar there's at least one big large battle which i think people were wanting back in battle of the apes people really wanted this big huge battle and they got that it was you know monkeys against humans these apes would beat the crap out of these humans because strength wise and build they're just different and you know there's some back and forth but you know obviously the apes just so much crushed it somewhat but despite all of this don't think it's an awful film which is why it's dead last and it's just a boring ass okay film number eight beneath the planet of the eight just like with number nine this one's really boring like especially after that crazy ending for the first one picking that up you know we got like name is that taylor he goes missing in this green green lightning thing like, apparently these random flashes and he disappears literally in a green screen it was hilarious and the other astronaut buddy from like the space or whatever finds this girl who can't talk they go back to the apes area we meet more of the apes we meet the same apes that help taylor and this girl get out because they're the one that seem to admire humanity and love it unlike these other apes that took over and then right after that turns out there are mutated people underground because of the radiation and nukes and whatnot there are surviving people but they're mutated like the mutants from x-men and they all look the show and then whatnot and while that's cool it's like i remember watching me like this came out of nowhere these films are based on books so i don't know if this is a thing but if it is it feels like something out of a writer's ass even if it is in the books because it's like i don't know there could have been a nuke and the apes just survived it because they're apes but maybe the surviving humans they just like oh i guess we survived but now we're just mutated who knows and then new guy isn't interesting like taylor wasn't an interesting character at all even in the first one but there's not that ape mystery no more since that's gone it's like okay now what are we doing for the sequel overall the same thing this is kind of a repeat kind of of the first one which is added mutant people underground and then the movie ends on a cliffhanger and this white flash so that they could come up with another sequel in the next year because these films came out one year apart so that they can milk out this franchise but overall just kind of boring unmemorable and just a repeat of kind of the first one number seven battle for the planet of the apes this film is slightly better than the other two it's still all right and i'm assuming most people again i probably should have a lot more research but i'm assuming most people don't like this film because there's no battle it came out back in 1973 and i think because of the previous three films it seems like everyone was expecting this big battle between humanity and apes and we did not get that at all in this film instead we just went back into humanity trying to work with the apes caesar he wants peace between the two and i'm assuming it's because of budget like there's no way from the first one that the second one the budget went down especially with that green screen stuff so when i was watching i was okay clearly this isn't like the biggest budget of all time so i was not really excited about it because there's no way absolutely no way they could have done a big ass battle i don't know how they could have done it back in 73 and i do feel that this is like the only way to end the original story of the film where we have an ape aldo general aldo who betrays the apes who doesn't like the ways of caesar because of his hatred towards humans he decides to kill a human and kill one of his own apes caesar's son which leads into this chasing tree battle which it's actually 
quite hilarious. This isn't even a battle. This is just chasing up an ape up a tree. But anyway, Caesar needed that. He needed to know and learn this because he realizes that, hey, both humans and apes, they could both be evil and corrupted. So there's really no point of us fighting if all of us are pretty much the same in terms of just trying to survive. So that's when he decides there needs to be true peace between humanity and apes. And there is. And then the film opens. It ends with like this older ape reading off the hero of Caesar. We see human kids and little ape kids hanging out with each other. And there's like a statue of Caesar right there as they commemorate his sacrifice and his leadership and to finding true peace between both species so it's a nice way to end it i like what they were doing but i think it was predictable it was like okay yeah this is kind of the only way because you know violence of violence is really gonna help so it's like what's the other way the only way peace obviously and something has to happen in order for caesar to know and see that personally and he does with aldo and then he makes that change he's now known for being a hero so i think it ends off the first timeline the first set of film on a good note Number six, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. This is the one that they introduced Caesar because his parents died from the previous films. Caesar, he's getting caretaken by the zookeeper. However, he needs to get in a facility where, guess what? The world now, they're controlling apes, treating them like pets now. So there's a sense of being enslaved, obviously, throughout the whole film. And because of Caesar's experience in this film, being mistreated, seeing how humans treat them. And then the character named McDonald, he's also there to be like, yeah, you know, I'm not evil or anything. I just, this is how the world works. And hopefully you can see that. Caesar does see that. But because there's this build up of hatred for him as the film goes on near the end there's a breaking point seeing them be treated like trash and garbage so by the end he rebels with his group of apes they like kill a bunch of cops and whatnot and he has this pretty good speech on rebelling their need of freedom fight back essentially but leads into battle and his speech was good and like you wanted to see Caesar rebel because of what happens in conquest i do like though that when he nods to them that's they know to rebel like there's one scene when he like just looks at an ape is like do it pull out that trash and he does it i don't know it just those looks were hilarious but this film is all also a film that I wouldn't rewatch because I don't want to see, you know, enslavement and whatnot. Like, this is still a good film. But in terms of rewatchability, the one that I would choose last or close to last, Caesar learns the hard truth of how apes are being treated and learns to rebel and how their enslavement will lead to the battle and their freedom. Like, that's all good stuff. But again, I don't really want to rewatch it. It's like a one-time watch for me. And the killings of the cops were actually quite brutal. Okay, not really brutal, but there was blood in it. It was just, okay, this is like, like showing them the violence of violence. Planet of the Apes. Beyond your wildest dreams. Number five, the original Planet of the Apes from 1968. Now this film was smacking like right in the middle-ish, and the reason that is is because you know the film has something going for it until the very end. Honestly, like there's walking for the first 20 minutes, which is fine. We get introduced to our three characters, which we only know one of them, Taylor, who isn't very interesting because he's just like kind of like the audience perspective of being like, oh crap, this is like another planet, this is another Earth, which is why that ending works so well and it's still so effective is because this movie makes you think that this Planet of Apes were on another planet. This is Earth, and our character. Taylor is convinced that it is another planet and throughout the film the apes don't really say anything they talk talking to apes it's weird right but also cool he gets enslaved in his cages and whatnot there's a one that looks like a Mad Max for a road cage or whatnot there's like a court system for the apes and whatnot they all talk about how they overthrow humanity how they took over it and how this is their earth now this is their planet he meets a girl he meets two very nice apes that help him and will be a of Caesar we get to that very end where the older apes are like you better go over there you want like what you see and he goes over there he sees the Statue of Liberty in the realization to that character Taylor and the audience is the fact that he's been on earth this is earth earth has been overthrown has been taken by apes and the cause of it was humanity themselves they doomed themselves with probably like a cure or virus or not virus but drug or whatever in order for apes to talk humanity's downfall is themselves and Taylor realizes that just like with the audience which is why it is still a very cool effective top twist of all time but aside from that this film was you know it, it was fine it was good like it was decent it was set piece within like the apes house thing there's that catching scene all the apes having the guns and i first saw that in family guy which a lot of old movies i get because of family guy but aside from that inning most of the characters aren't at all interesting they're you know they serve their purpose i don't think they're meant to be because this is kind of like an unknown world to taylor and then again the apes are the only one that's interesting we don't really get much of that in the first or beneath it's mainly about taylor and his perspective which is fine in the later films obviously they knew hey apes are the more interesting aspect and they just have a human element throughout essentially escape from the planet of the apes. 
Number four, Escape from the Planet of the Apes. I had a really fun time with this one. It's basically the reverse of Taylor's story from the first one, where now the apes from the first two that we know and like are now on Earth in the past in like 2030 or something. Basically way in the past. It's not in the future no more. And they have to experience what enslaving is like and what other people did to humans in the future. So it's just a cool compare contrast with the apes. And then the fun of it all is figuring out Earth. Like they're like celebrities at one point. News outlets talking about them, how there's talking apes court system or courtroom where they talk about how you know they were talking apes they lie about some things they don't want to reveal everything you know the fact that they overtook humanity but about how things were how humans were you know it's a cool compare contrast two different sides two different ways of living two different lives essentially and eras and years and then the one big major factor with the humanity in this movie is fear fear basically just overtakes them by the people in power because they believe that you know these apes are while they're good if what they're saying is true we need to kill them immediately and now and the reason for that is fear fear is just a big thing and that scares everyone Everyone. And so they hunt them down, criminals and whatnot. There's two doctors that helped them just like they did. Taylor in the first film, a lot of parallels because again, they had to do something one year, two years apart from that and the one year from beneath. But despite these two doctors helping, by the end, they succumb to death while leaving their legacy with Caesar while the zookeeper keeps him, cares for him. The way that they died though, it was a bit dramatic. I mean, it's supposed to be, but I don't know. It was a bit hilarious. They slowly go over each other, dying next to each other, which is a nice moment. It was a stepping stone for Caesar's story to come. And also that opening scene of the astronauts and then them revealing that they are apes it's a fun and awesome way to open up this film at least in the intro of them being enslaved thought it was just a really cool intro and like probably my favorite and best like way to introduce the film of apes Number three, War for the Planet of the Apes. Out of the reboot trilogy, this is my least favorite. It's still a really good film, but I think I was expecting a battle, which I probably shouldn't have at all because this is just like battle where there's a lot of talking. There's a lot of seeing Caesar break down for the very first time within this reboot. Like we see him be whipped and almost killed to death and we never really got to see that. He's always been on top. So seeing that, seeing his downfall to being a leader and him leading his tribe was awesome to see, but then he wouldn't get back up. Woody Harrelson's performance was hilarious. He came up shaving his bald head and everything talking about you know the other side he's the other perspective of humanity that suffered more than this virus he had to kill little kids his own family and he just ran away from all of it which is why he's building up a wall and barrier so that when the other military u.s armies come in he can help and defend himself and he blames caesar for this because he was essentially the cause of this he led the army of apes first one and that would lead into like a whole virus that would spread around create this apocalypse world and then there's like a new strain in this one so it's like all of it was because of caesar because all he wants was his freedom of his people freedom of apes and because of this it will lead into all these issues within humanity really good performance by Woody Harrison and Andy Serkis both of them play well off of each other they also introduce like muted people or mutated people as well they bring that back from beneath being like oh yeah they, I guess he didn't uh, do that as well and then the one ape that portrays them later named Donkey and then he later has a change of heart that felt I think that's why this is number three is because I don't know did he really need like, another ape to portray them it's showing that corruption can happen in both apes and humans but that already happened and having it happen in this one it's just so redundant he betrays him he works with Woody Harrelson with his friend apes but by then he has a change of heart all right and then the apes they want to go to oasis so they go to colorado this place where there's like a probably like a bit lake however when all of them get there with caesar after they get rid of all the humans caesar dies series starts with him and then the story obviously ends with him dying leading his people to freedom living in an oasis that's you know far away from humanity and probably better for them and humans as well and i do like the fact that they couldn't really find a true peace between humanity it only happens when caesar has a connection with the other human characters aside from that there's no true peace between the other humans and apes something like that is never possible has already begun Number two, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, the second one in the reboot trilogy. This one deals with the confrontation between humanity and apes even more. Virus spreading around and humanity is slowly dying out. And the apes are still living in the woods all swinging until they meet Ricardo Diaz from Arrow Season 6 and 7. She's one of his apes and it creates this conflict immediately even though there was a previous conflict. And so these two go to ahead. A visual piece in this film like, you know, there's kids bonding with apes, a family bonding with an ape. Like there's bonding between apes and humans. There's a sign of hope, apes and humans living within each other. But one big glaring issue there's going to be another side on both sides of apes and humans that will always not get along and always hate each other and that's the issue in order to maintain true peace and just peace in general everyone's gotta get along but that's just not gonna happen because every ape every human they're all very different they all have different mentalities different ideologies different everything about them is different and so there can never be true peace if that's the case and then one of the other apes what's his name don't that's like rolling and kills those two guys taking their guns all messing around koba there we go I almost forgot his name koba he betrays caesar he kills one of 
his own kind because they don't want to do what he's doing. Kill humans for the sake of killing them. He realizes both humans and apes, they can both be evil, corrupted, and it's not worth fighting for each side. It's good to maintain peace. But the issue with that is the scientist guy, whoever, the guy with the glasses on the human side, also for the military, for help. It's okay for the human side to be skeptical, obviously, because these apes, they can talk, they can hurt you, but, you know, it's also, they're oblivious to how things actually work. Like, there's a scene in a movie where Caesar comes up to him and is like, we want peace, we don't want a war. But if it comes to that, we will take it to war. And despite all that, this guy just calls it because fear is a big issue. Get rid of these, we want to go back to normal civilian of having her house and whatnot. And then there's a human connection with his family, whose name I forgot about, where he helps Caesar. There could never really be true peace because of other conflicts, other things being brought up, hatred between each other. <laughs> And then my number one, my favorite film from this franchise is Rise of the Planet of the Apes, the very first introduction of the new reboot trilogy. I really dug this movie, mainly because seeing apes on the Golden Gate Bridge of San Francisco, that image and that, just seeing that, that was really cool and it's still cool 10 years later. Seeing that James Franco character trying to help these apes, trying to figure out, you know, how they could have apes talk, eventually to Caesar saying that very just powerful, very cool no moment to Harry Potter kid from Harry Potter and Julian from The Flash season three, Caesar's realization that hey throughout his time of living he doesn't know where he is in society he loves the family he's with with james franco but other animals and humans look down upon him james franco puts some kind of drug in his mother and son gets born that's caesar and he inherited her smart intelligence things of these things being like where do i fit in society humans don't like me animals don't like me when he goes to the zoo the apes don't like him the only people that love him is james franco and his family because of the mistreatment by julian himself he's like you know what time to make my fellow apes smart he gets that gas from james franco's house and frees all of them free on the streets of san francisco and it's like a this big thing obviously they all just rebel they all want to go back into their elements in the woods jumping on trees swinging on trees and humans they fight back they have the u.s military and cops but they use their own I men pushing it next to them and they don't really uh, do they kill well hold on there's one moment though of caesar seeing a guy almost falling off the bridge he walks away but there's one ape just comes up be like what up and it pushes him killing him i just thought that was a hilarious moment it's supposed to be like this dire situation moment but i just i just left my ass off of that caesar let him go forgave him but this one other ape didn't he's like fuck you push you off and then G James Franco is that human connection and so there's like an inner conflict first film for Caesar being like well I like human beings I like my family also I really like my apes I want them to be free I don't want them to be in cages but you know he obviously chooses the ape side but that last moment between the two is like a parent and a kid James Franco's a parent having to say goodbye to his kid kid ape Caesar are not gonna see each other again they don't because they don't bring him back and so that moment to me was a very good one very heartwarming because it's like a parent saying goodbye to his kid going off moving on from their life or going to college or whatnot you know the apes finally finding their freedom with the lead of Caesar so it's just a really damn good film so that was all of my rankings for the Planet of the Apes franchise. Let me know what you would rank these. Obviously, it's going to be way different from mine. But I'm glad I did watch all these films throughout the month of June and July. What on? When is this going to be released? I actually don't know. Anyway, it's going to take like two months to get through in terms of uploading it. But I'm glad I did. And that trilogy, that reboot trilogy, it is as good as it was. It is. I've always heard about it. I don't think it's great. It is really damn good. It's a really damn good trilogy. There's not a single film that's awful. Again, maybe like the last one, you know, like 2001 remake, maybe. But even that to me is just kind of alright. So. That's it for me. This has been The World So Far, and thank you for watching.